So my name is Shane Larson. I'm a professor at Northwestern University and an astronomer at the Heather Planetarium. So I just did a little five-minute spiel last night with my colleagues at the Victory Garden Theater after the premiere of their science play, Queen. And so uh, the play was all about science, and they wanted to, uh, people to come in and talk about the mixture between art and science. And so what I did for them was nominally what I call a magic show. And the point in this is that teaching often exposes people to things that seem magical and remarkable when you don't know any science. And what I'm trying to illustrate here is that the things that go on in the world around you always have an explanation. And so this is the thing that I did for them. So uh, this is a classic demo. If you've taken physics before, you might have seen it. Uh, it will end at the very end with the magic trick, the bit of the demo. And at the end of the video, I'll give you an explanation for how it works. Uh, but before that, I'm going to also do a little bit of magic, which is I'm going to convince you that you can understand a little bit of science that might on its surface seem really complicated. And so the bit of science that I want to talk about is something called the second law of thermodynamics. There are, of course, really deep uh, uh, mathematical explanations of the second law of thermodynamics. But one of the things that I like about physics is there almost always are nice intuitive ways of understanding how the laws of physics work that you can carry around with you and use to help understand how the world behaves around you. So what is the second law? Well, the second law in one of its forms says the universe tends towards disorder. So what does that mean? So the explanation I have to give people is to think about your bedroom. There is one way to fold up all your underwear very nicely and put it in the top drawer of your dresser. But there are about a million ways to leave it laying strewn all over your bedroom. And it's very easy for the universe to get into one of those disarrayed, disordered ways. It's harder for it to get into the ordered way. And so the tendency of the universe to be in its disordered state is simply because it's easy to get into disordered states. So a classic example of that has to do with a piece of glass. So this is a common laboratory beaker, the kind that you may have had in chemistry class when you took chemistry. Uh, if you're a nerd like us, you use them in your house as drinkware in the kitchen. Okay. So there's one way to have a perfect ordered piece of glass, a beaker. But there are gazillion ways for the speaker to be in a different state, in a state you and I would call broken. How do I know that? Well, if I just leave the beaker on the counter for five minutes, it's going to be in its ordered state, very likely. If I leave it there for a week, there's a good chance a person or a cat's going to knock it off or break it. If I leave it for a year, the chance it's going to get broken goes up even higher. And if I leave it for a century, I can almost guarantee you this beaker will be broken. So let me tell you something about the disordered states. Okay, so right now the glass is in its single perfect ordered state. And I have here a common laboratory rock, which is the enforcer of the second law. And the reason I know that is it says second law right on the back of the rock. Okay, if I were to take my beaker and stick it in my trusty physics cat litter pail, and I were to put it in there, with the second law of rock, and then I do the hokey pokey, then the beaker is now in one particular disordered state. There are, of course, many different disordered states, which I can get to by doing the hokey pokey again. That's a different disordered state than we had before. This is the reason the universe likes to be in a disordered state. There are many ways to get into the disordered state, and only one way to be in that perfect beaker state that I started with. Now, the question you should be asking yourself is, why do I think you need to know this? There's probably no reason you need to know about the second law of thermodynamics, unless you're trying to explain why your room or your desk looks the way it does to your boss or your mom or your spouse. But the truth is, I think it's good for all of us to think about science and know something about science. Science is an inoculation of your mind against people who are trying to fool you. 
when you're perfectly capable of thinking about complicated things, understanding complicated issues, and reasoning your way to logical conclusions based on the evidence the world presents around you. I just told you something about the second law of thermodynamics, and you should be able to understand that that beaker is in a disordered state, and there's nothing I can do to get it back into its ordered state. The laws of the thermodynamics prevent that glass from being anything now except in its broken state. But there is indeed magic in the world, and maybe I can break the second law of thermodynamics. I have a good friend, Steve Aldrich, who's a magician, and he used to, on my birthday every year, do magic tricks for me because he knew it blew my mind and he knew that I could never figure them out. Good magicians never tell you their tricks, but good physicists always do. So this is an explanation of how what you just saw worked. So in physics, when light goes through an object, there's a number that we use to describe how the light behaves. We call it the index of refraction. And when light goes through two transparent objects, you can tell the difference between the two objects if they have different index. And as it turns out, the material that we make chemistry beakers out of, it's a kind of glass called borosilicate, has almost exactly the same transparency number, that index of refraction, as vegetable oil. So here, you'll see this beaker has half it filled with vegetable oil and half filled with air. And if I lower it, into the beaker full of oil, you'll see that the part that has oil in it blends in almost exactly with the rest of the oil. The transparency is almost exactly the same, so you can't tell the beaker's there. But the part of the beaker that has air in it, air has a different index than the oil, and so you can tell that the air is there. So when I started this experiment, the magic trick, I had the beaker preloaded into the big beaker of oil, and you couldn't tell that it was there until I pulled it out at the very end. So it looks like magic, but it's really physics, and that's really the way this all works.